Yesterday I had given you some problems that I wanted you to do from the Lesson 13 problem set. I want to talk about number two. Number two says, what number must be added to 13,875 to result in a sum of 25,884? So let's draw a tape diagram. And let's think about what each part of this problem means. The instructions told you to draw a tape diagram, to use numbers to solve, and to write your answer as a statement, then to check your answers. So we need to make sure we have all four parts. So, does it matter if I put the total at the bottom or the top? No, I could do either one. I've been doing it at the top, but I drew it at the, the total bracket at the bottom this time just to show you that it doesn't matter. The, what matters is that I'm showing I'm using the total or the whole thing. Okay, I'm using the whole amount. So what is the total in this problem? Not right now. The total is 25,884. How do we know that's the total? Yeah. What would be what number should must be added to thirteen thousand eight hundred seventy five to the sum of twenty five thousand eight hundred eighty four? Exactly. That word sum tells us that it's the total. It's everything put together. So what do we know about thirteen thousand eight hundred seventy five? What's it going to represent in our problem? The, it's gonna represent the number that we have to add. Yeah, it's one of our parts. And then we have to figure out the other part. Thirteen thousand eight hundred 75 is a part. Do we know the other part? No. So what do we use to represent what we don't know? What do we use, Harper? A variable. And a variable is any letter unless, unless the problem tells us what variable to use. We get to pick. So, Harper, what variable would you like to use? C. Okay. So 13,875 plus C equals a total of 25,884. I could write an addition problem with a missing add-in. 13,875 plus C equals 25,884. And I could try to figure out what I need to add up to equal this number, or how else could I solve that problem? Um, you, could, uh, you, can, you could add up from 13 to, to get to 25,000. Okay. Yeah, I could add up, or I could do what other property I could I use? Um, I didn't do all, like, I didn't do three of I showed numbers. I just put the number that I needed to under the thing to add up. I put put one under the one to get two, and then two under three to get five. Okay, and so you add it up, okay? And then I put zero under eight, and four under seven, and five under five. Okay, five. did anybody do anything different besides adding up? No. How did you solve, Briley? Subtract. You subtracted, what did you subtract? That is smart, isn't it? Okay. So we're going to take our total, 25,884, and subtract 13,875. And when I subtract, that's going to tell me the value of C, or the missing add-in in the problem. So let's look and see if we're ready to subtract. Can I do 4 minus 5? No. Nope. nope. So what do I have to do? You have to get some from the 8. I'm going to borrow a group of 10. So now I have 7 10s. Yep. And seven I'm going five. to give 10 ones so to the 4. So that will be 14. Yep. All right. Can I subtract five. my 10s? 7 minus 7? Yes. yes. 8 minus 8 in the hundreds? Yes. yes. 5 minus 3? Yes. 2 minus 1? All right, so I'm ready to subtract. 14 minus 5 is 9. nine. nine. 7 minus 7? Zero. Zero. 0. 8 minus 8? Zero. 
I'm just bringing down my comma. Five minus three, five minus three is, is two. two. One. One. So what's the missing add in? Twelve thousand nine. Twelve thousand nine. Okay. Okay. So we have our tape diagram. We solved using numbers. Now we have to write our answer as a statement. The question says what number must be added to 13,875 to result in a sum of 25,884. So I could write a statement that says 12,009. Does that does that take the place of what number? Cuz that is our number, right? Yeah. Okay. Must So that must be added to 13,875 to result in a sum of 25,884. Who got that one correct? Give me a thumbs up if you got that one correct. Good deal. Okay, so several of you, let's talk about something really quick. Several of you said that you added up instead of subtracting, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. That's You can, you can do that, but you have to remember when you're adding up that you still have to take care of any regrouping that would happen okay yeah. so I think that's where some of you kind of got thrown off I, I, in when you were solving right right okay yes yes we are all right the next question on the back number three Artist Michelangelo was born on March 6th, 1475. Author Mim Fox was born on March 6th, 1946. How many years after Michelangelo was born was Fox born? So let's think about a tape diagram. We have two famous people. One's a painter or an artist, one is an author. Mm -hmm. They were born on the same day, but not the, but same, not the year. same year. They were born years apart. We want to know the difference or how many years after Michelangelo was born that Fox was born. Is Michelangelo the, um, the writer? No, it says an artist, yeah. Michelangelo. Michelangelo. He's like, okay. Yes, he painted several famous and paintings. And All right, so... What's our total in this problem? Our total is... What's total, Harper? Total, What's the total? Oh. Okay. <coughs> 1946, which is 1,946. Yeah, 1, yeah, changing dates, yeah. years to... Um, into standard form is kind of sometimes gets a little bit tricky, but just remember that your place values stay the same. Okay, so what part of 1946 or 1946 do we know? 14,000 Yeah, we know 1475, which is 1,475. We do not know the, how much, how many years passed in between their birth. I'm going to use a Y for years. All right, so how am I going to solve? What do I do to solve, Ansley? You have to subtract um, 1946 and 1946. Um, Very good. I'm going to subtract 1946 just, minus 1475. Okay, so since we're adding, I'm sorry, since we're subtracting, we've got to make sure that we subtract in the correct order. We can't flip those numbers around. Yep. So if I have six, can I take five away? Yes. yes. 
If I have four, can I take seven away? No. Nope. So I'm going to have to regroup. My nine becomes eight. eight. The four becomes 14. 14. Okay, so we can do 14 minus seven. Can we do eight minus four? Yes. One minus one? Yes. All right, so we're ready to subtract. Six minus five is one. 14 minus seven is seven. seven. Eight minus four is four. four. And one minus one is zero. zero. Oh, so my answer, the number of years that passed by were 471. Okay. So we need to, all right, so we need to take care of writing our statement. The question says, how many years after Michelangelo was born was Fox born? So I'm going to say Fox was born 471 years after Good, Michelangelo. And I'm putting a period at the end. All right. During the month of March, 68,025 pounds of king crab were caught. If 15,614 pounds were caught in the first week of March, how many pounds were caught in the rest of the month? Okay, so a couple of you were kind of hung up on this one. What do we know about the amount of king crab that was caught in March? During the month of March, 68,025 pounds of king crab were caught. So that tells me that's my total. That's, that's all the crab that was caught in March. So that's going to be the total, 68,025 pounds. We're on number four now. The part that one was 471. The part that we have on it. We know the first week they caught 15,614 pounds. That's the part we know. Yeah. That was week one. Do we know about the rest of the weeks? No. Nope. nope, that's what we're solving for. So we're going to use a variable. What variable do you want to use, Christopher? Um, a W for weeks. A W for weeks. Okay, that works. We need to figure out how many pounds of crab were caught in the rest of those weeks of March. So, Amy, how are we going to solve this one? How about 614? Okay. So we're subtracting. We've got our total amount on top. Yep. We're taking away the part that we know. So let's see if we can subtract. Can, if I'm looking at my ones, can I do 5 minus 4? Yes. Can I do 2 minus 1? Yes. Can I do 0 minus 6? No. Nope. That would get me a negative number. So I'm going to come to my thousands. I'm going to take 1,000 away and add it to my hundreds. So now I have 10 hundreds. Can I do 10 minus 6? Yes. Can I do 7 minus 5? Yes. 6 minus 1? Yes. All right, so let's subtract. 5 minus 4 is 1. 2 minus 1 is 10 minus 6. How about 4? 10 minus 6 is 4. Bringing down my comma. 7 minus 5 is 2. And 6 minus 1 is? Five. So 52,411. Yes. W, our missing part, is 52,411. All right. What could my statement say? Give me an example of a statement, Ansley. Can I say what I wrote? Absolutely. Um, the 52,411 came out with part in the rest of the month. Good. 52,411 pounds of king crab. Is king crab just a bigger version of crab? It's just a species of crab, yes. Of king crab were caught, what did you say after that? Okay. Isn't spider crab the biggest crab? 
All right, so I forgot one part of our directions. We haven't done that this, on these last few problems. The last part of our direction said to check your work. Oh. How can we check our work without just subtracting again? How could, what could we do differently to check and make yeah, sure? We can add. I can add? What can I add? You can add like 15,000 back. Yeah, I can take my two parts and add them together to see if it equals my total or my whole. Okay, so let's do that. I've got, does it matter which one of my parts I put on top? No. No, I can do either one. We'll do 52,411. Plus the other part, which was 15,614. I'm going to add those up. So I'm going to look at my ones place first. I have 1 plus 4, which is 5. 1 plus 1 is 2. 4 plus 6 is 10. So I'm going to write down my 0. Carry the 1. 1 plus 2 plus 5 is 8, and 5 plus 1 is 6. six. So I got 68,025. Does that match the total? Yep. My two parts added together equal the total that we started with, so we know we did it correctly. All right. Last question on your problem set. James bought a used car. After driving exactly 9,050 miles... The odometer read 118,064 miles. What was the odometer reading when James bought the car? First of all, what's an odometer? It's like the meter know. thing you have for how many miles. Yeah, it's in your car. It's on the dash in the instrument panel where, like, it tells you how fast you're going, how much gas you have. There's numbers that tell you how many miles are on your car. So that's what an odometer is. I had no clue what it was called. Yeah. I just knew that, that yeah. what it is. Yeah, you, good. You used the context of the problem to figure out what that word meant. Very good. It means how many miles you've driven. We have a okay. Yeah, so however many, every time you drive a mile, that puts another mile on your car or on your engine. That's, when you hear people talk about that, then that's, that's what they're referring to. Yes, it does. All right, so let's talk about this problem. Do we know, what do we know about James and his driving, Amy? Um, that, um, I, I just know the answer. Well, um, we're not worried about the answer yet. We're worried about what we know in the problem. says, James bought a used car after driving exactly 9,050 miles. So what do we know about those 9,050 miles? Keith, Cadence, Katie. Can I go to the restroom? What do we know about those 9,050 miles? What's that going to be, Amy? Is that the total he drove or is that part of what he drove? It's part of what That's part of what he drove. So I'm going to write 9,050 as one of my parts. Mm -hmm. The odometer read 118,064 miles. Is that the total number of miles on the car? Or is that part of the miles? It's part of the miles. What did we just say the odometer did? Yep. It tells you how many miles you've driven your car. So that's going to be the whole thing. Okay. Yep. So the whole is 118,064. And the question asks us, what was the odometer reading when James bought the car? 
It wants to know how many miles were on the car when he bought it. So that's going to be the part that he started with. 9,050 is the part that he added. And this is the total miles that are on the car. So what variable do you want to use for this one? What variable do you want to use? What are we going to use to represent the part we don't know? D? Is that what you said? T? T? Okay. Sorry, I misunderstood you. So T. We're solving for T, which represents the number of miles that were on the car whenever James bought it. All right, so how are we going to solve, Amy? Um, you're, you're going to add. What are we going to add? One hundred eighteen thousand sixty-four represents the total number of miles that are on the car. So, am I going to add something to that to figure out where he started? Oh wait, uh, we did this wrong. I did this wrong. Did this wrong. I know the total. I know how many miles the car has now. I want to know the total miles, he ha or the number of miles that were on the car before he drove it nine thousand fifty miles. So, what are we going to do, Braley? We'll get it in a minute. We need to, add. So you need to subtract. We need to subtract. So I know the total. I know the part that he's driven it. I want to know what he started with. And you said so that that's what he drove to get that total. And then I knew I did it wrong, so I Now we need to subtract 118,064 minus 9,050. He started, let's look, we're going to, Kaden, we're going to start with the number of miles when he bought the car. That's what we're using T for. And then he drove his car 9,050 miles. And we need, then he ended up when he finished. He ended up with 118,064 miles on his car. So if I add where he started plus the number of miles he drove, that gets me to his new mileage on his car. And we know to find a missing add-in or missing part that we can use subtraction. So let's look at our subtraction problem that we've written. Can I do 4 minus 0? Yes. Can I do 6 minus 5? Yes. 0 minus 0? 8 minus 9? No. So I can't do 8 minus 9. If I have 8 and I take 9 away, that's a negative 1, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to go to my 10,000s. I'm going to take this 10,000 and make it into thousands. So now I have 18 thousands. So I can do 18 minus 9. I can do 0 minus nothing and 1 minus nothing. All right, Amy. Tell me what to do to subtract now. We've already taken care of making sure we can subtract everything. So where do I start? Okay, so tell me. Four minus zero is four. Okay, what's next? Six minus five is one. Okay. Zero minus zero is zero. Okay, next. Good. Okay, zero minus nothing is zero. And one. One minus nothing is one. So T, the number of miles that were on James's car when he bought it, was 109,014. 
So I need to write a statement and I could say the odometer reading was 109,014 miles when James bought his car. So let's make sure this makes sense because this one was kind of tricky. If he started with 109,014 miles, the problem tells us that he drove 9,050 miles. So here's where he started. Here's the starting. Here's how much more he drove. If I put those two together, would that equal the number of miles he has now? Yeah. And we could check that by using addition. So let's do that really quickly and then it's going to be time to switch. So 109,014 plus 9,050 and I'm making sure I line up my place values. 4 plus 0 is 4. 1 plus 5 is 6. 0 plus 0 is 0. 9 plus 9 is 18. I write down the 8. Carry the 1. 1 plus 0 is 1, and 1 plus nothing is 1. 118,064. That's the total miles that he has on his car now, what his odometer reads. So we know that we did it correctly.